Stayallday.com. Now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there, boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called Work on Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is When Motivation Matters. Before we get into this, I remind you all of two things. First of all, my daily motivation, Monday motivation message is guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point to start your day and your week, respectively. All you got to do is text me to be part of my text community. It's free to join. My number is 305-384-6894. Once we start sending that message out again, you'll be getting those straight to your phone. You'll know about it or as our bot will alert you that they are coming. Secondly, work on your game university. That's the place where I do all my coaching. If you would like to get the bulletproof mindset installed so that you are mentally bulletproof dealing with everything that is going to come at you and maybe is already coming at you in life, you want to make sure you have a clear strategy and game plan for what you are doing to move yourself and your business slash career forward. If you want to have systems so that you can do the same things the same way every time and operate with consistency, and you want to make sure you're being held accountable to implement and perform at a high level, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. You can see what we're doing in our program, and you can take your next step into being a member of the university. That link is, again, workonyourgameuniversity.com. is down below in the description. Getting into the topic here today, when motivation matters. Now, you have heard me consistently, maybe, if you've been listening to me for a while, Heard me consistently push back on the general concept of motivation. I'm not against motivation. After all, I just told you I have a daily motivation, a Monday motivation message. And one of the first ways I got started actually talking about mindset period was through a series of videos I put on YouTube starting back in 2010 called The Weekly Motivation. Those videos actually became the basis, the foundation of my transition from talking about sports to talking about everything that I talk about here today. So I am not against motivation even though I use those really just because that's the term that people, most people identify with when I say motivation. I have pushed back on the concept of motivation, not because it's not valuable, but because many people go looking for it when instead they should be looking for something that is more consistent and reliable, known as discipline. I wrote a whole book about this concept called The Third Day, The Decision That Separates the Pros from the Amateurs, and it's all about installing systematically and strategically discipline into your life. You can get a free copy of that book by going to thirddaybook.com. And that's what the third day concept is all about. I prefer the third day over motiv any form of motivation. Motivation comes and goes, whereas discipline is much more uh, consistent and reliable, as I said. However, despite all that that I just said, motivation is still useful at certain times and in certain places when used for the right reasons. And today I'm going to explain those times, those reasons, and how to use it. Good. Point number one. Today's topic, once again, when motivation matters. Number one. Motivation is a gives you a reason to move yourself to action more readily than information. Now, despite all the information you have access to and everyone who's listening to my voice right now, you have access to a ton of information literally at your fingertips. All that if all the information in the world does not move a person to actually do anything. You need motivation to do something. Motivation is the impetus to action, whereas information is potential action if you use it, but if you have no motivation to use your information, then the information is useless. And if you have motivation with no information, then you just become reckless. So they actually serve each other. The motivation is the gas in the tank. You have a beautiful car with no gas in the tank, then the car is not going to go anywhere. It looks good, but it's just going to sit there on the parking lot and do nothing. So the definition of motivation, again, is the reason that one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. That is what motivation means. What is your reason for taking action? So when you get some good information, that can be a good reason to do something. And you may want a bigger reason than that, because information alone rarely moves people to action. How do I know this? And how can you know it? Look around at how much access to information everyone in the world has and look at how many people still are not doing anything. OK, so that's the proof. Everybody has access to information, but a lot of people are still doing absolutely nothing despite all this access to information that they allegedly have. So motivation is your reason for why you do something. So if you want to be more disciplined, folks, guess what? You need a reason. You need a motivation to be disciplined. So motivation actually serves discipline. Discipline does not serve motivation. Motivation serves discipline. If you're going to be disciplined, how many people listen to this right now? There are some aspect of your life in which you 
need to be more disciplined and you know what it is and you know exactly what the discipline would be and what it will look like, yet you're still not doing it. Okay, let me help you out. You need a reason to implement that discipline. Just the fact that you know you need to do it is not a good enough reason. How do I know that? Well, I, you just proved it. <laughs> you know that you need to be more disciplined, but you're not doing it anyway. So just thinking about it and knowing it is not enough. How many people, how many times has any of you talked to a person who told you or they told you they had an issue and then you gave them something that could possibly solve their issue? And they said, well, they gave you some form of letting you know that they already knew what you just told them. Right. They already know what you just told them. And then you may have responded or thought to yourself, OK, well, if you already know, why the hell aren't you doing it? Now, has any of you ever had a conversation that kind of looked anything like that? OK, we all have. So many of you, many of us had those conversations with ourselves. OK, what do I need to do in order to solve this problem? OK, I need to do ABC. OK, I already know about ABC. Why am I not doing ABC? Because ABC, the information is not enough to get us to do anything. We need a motivation. We need a reason to do a thing. Just knowing what the thing is, is not enough. Many people make the mistake, and I talk to people all the time who have made this mistake, and they only realize that they're making a mistake, and they need to be taught, taught and explained that that is a mistake that they're making. These are the type of people I usually don't end up working with, by the way. So if this is you, uh, these are not the type of people I work with. I'll tell you the type of people I do like to work with in a moment. But these are the people who they feel like they have all the information necessary to do something, but they just need a little bit more information in order to make everything work wrong. And many people have this uh, inaccurate mindset that keeps them from achieving anything because they believe they have a good amount of the information that they need. They just need a little bit more and that'll solve all the problems. Wrong, folks. Do not be a pig. A pig is a professional information gatherer, P-I-G. You do not need to gather more information, folks. Information is not the thing in between you and where you want to be. It is motivation. You need a motivation to do something with what you, quote unquote, already know. If you're a type of person who feels like you already know all the stuff that you need, okay, then there, you shouldn't have any problems. If you already know, why aren't you doing it? Yeah. You need a motivation. You need a reason to do something. How many people I want to work with are people who understand that they have either, it can be several things. They can understand they have all the information, but what they need is some help with uh, kicking the ass to do it. This is also known as accountability. And high level performers want to be held accountable because it allows them to keep performing at a high level regardless of how they feel, or someone who feels as if, you know what, I am missing some insight. It's not information that they're missing because you can get information on Google for free, but it's insight. It's in, other, in other words, there's a ton of information, but I don't really know which information. I don't know how to apply it. I don't know when or where or why to apply it. So if someone can help me make sense of all the information that's out there, that can help me get to where I want to go, and I have a good reason to do so. All right, those kind of people I like working with. People understand that it's not just information that they need. But any of you out there who thinks the only thing you need is some information, okay, well, have at it. What are you waiting for? The very place where you are getting my voice coming to your ears, you have access to more information than you have time to consume. So obviously, information is not your problem. Your problem is insight or motivation, but usually one of, one of the two, or some form of accountability for implementation. Usually it's one of those three. Insight, meaning you have information but don't know what to do with it. Motivation, meaning you have information and things you want to do, but you have not been able to move yourself to action or some form of accountability slash implementation, meaning you know what you need to do and you know what action you need to take, but you just have not been able to move yourself to do it on a consistent basis. Usually people's issues fall under one of those three headings for the most part. So what is it for you? And if you really thought about it, you're going to find you find under one, you fall under one of those three categories. So discipline needs a motivation in order to, for it to be engaged. So when I tell you that even though I have not played a professional sport in almost 10 years, I still stay in professional athlete shape to the point that if I went to the gym, you might not think so if you see me now because I have a, a suit on. So people usually assume I'm some type of businessman and they're right because I am. But when I'm in the gym and I'm in workout gear, and people and someone asked me what I do. If I told them I was a professional athlete, for the most part, people will believe me, not because I'm uh, I have some type of adornment that says I'm an athlete, but because they see me working out. They see me there consistently. They see my physique. and that the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I have a principle that I always want to be in professional athlete shape, passable professional athlete shape, meaning passable, meaning if I told you I was a professional athlete, most people would believe it. that's what I mean by passable professional athlete shape. And that is my motivation to work out consistently to the point that I don't even think about it. Like, I don't think about if I'm going to the gym tomorrow. Like, it never crosses my mind. It's just a matter of what am I going to do when I get there? Not a matter of if I'm going. All right. So again, that's for me. I'm not saying you need to be like that. 
but you need to find your motivations for the things that you want to be disciplined at. I'm disciplined at going to the gym every day because I have a reason to do so. Everybody follow what I'm saying here? You need a reason to do the things that you want to do more in a more disciplined way. Just wanting to do them is not enough. So motivation is very useful, folks. You just need to learn how to use it in the right places at the right times and in the right way. You should also know that emotional reasons, i.e. emotional motivations, drive resourcefulness and push us to utilize things that we understand logically but are not using. It's an important sentence. So let me say it one more time. Emotional reasons... Because emotions are strong energy. You have to learn how to harness and utilize your emotions. Don't let them control you, but learn how to use them. They drive resourcefulness, which is how you find ways to make things happen, even if you don't have the direct and perfect resources that you want. That's called resourcefulness. And that pushes us to utilize things that we already know about and already have access to, but have not been doing anything with. How many of you have things that could provide you information that could tell you what to do and even tell you how to do it, but you are still not utilizing them, even though they're sitting right there. Right, I can tell you, if you're watching this on video right now, behind me on this bookshelf, you see a bunch of my books, but lower on the shelf that you can't really see on camera, is a bunch of books that are not mine, that I have purchased, things I have ordered, uh, newsletters that I have received, products that I bought from other people that I have not yet read. And since I haven't read them, there's no way I can apply them. I need to give myself good enough reasons to make sure I take the time to go and read those things. And I do take time to read them. I got one of them sitting on my desk right now. When I finish recording this, I'm going to finish reading this issue of this newsletter that I got that I had paid money to get access to. So sometimes we have access to a bunch of stuff that we're not using simply because we don't have strong enough reasons to do it. You got to give yourself a reason to use stuff that you have. Everyone who's listening to this right now, I guarantee you that you have access to a whole lot of things in your life right now that you are simply not using that access. You are not applying the stuff that would be available to you if you utilize that access because you have not given yourself a reason to do so. Now, this is not to say that everything you have access to, you need to go use. So everybody who's listening to this is a free library in the town that you live in with thousands of books in it. I'm not telling you you need to go read every book in the library just because it's there. I'm saying that you have access to a whole lot of things in addition to that library that you're not using because you have not given yourself a reason to use them. And if you give yourself a reason, you will find that you have access to more resources than you thought. Whereas many times what we do instead is we give ourselves excuses that we don't have access to that resource. Well, if I just had that, then that would solve everything. But what about all these other things that you do have? What are you doing with those? Because if you use those, then it might get you more of that. The thing that you're missing, you might be able to get a whole lot closer to it if you use more of what you already have right now. Again, this is what we call resourcefulness. Instead of blaming your lack of resources, use your resourcefulness and you'll realize that, oh, you got a bunch of resources available to you right now. You didn't even realize. You can have access to a ton of logical stuff and never put it to good use if you don't have a strong enough reason to do so, i.e. a motivation. So remember that emotions are great gas pedals as I said, terrible steering wheels as well. But listen, every car needs gas. <laughs> every car needs a gas pedal. I've never seen a car moving without a gas pedal, unless we're talking about Fred Flintstone or George Jetson. Otherwise, everybody needs a gas pedal on their car. Your motivations are the gas tank and the gas pedal. So never be confused into believing that these don't matter. Again, even though you may hear me say discipline is more important than motivation, and it is, that doesn't mean motivation does not matter. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is when motivation matters. Number two, motivation is a starting point that triggers long-term discipline. So we just, we just walked right over top of this point here in point number one, second half of point number one. As you know, discipline is about showing up consistently and doing the work, right? Even when you don't feel like doing it. That's what discipline is. When you are properly motivated, it can trigger discipline. I just gave you an example. I am motivated to make sure I stay in great shape. That triggers the discipline to go to the gym every day and to drink water and to you know, I still eat junk food. But to make sure I'm taking care of my body, make sure I'm getting a good amount of rest so I can wake up in the morning and go do a workout, wake up earlier than I need to, to go do the workout before I start doing my regular work. All right. There are things that I am motivated to do that I have reasons that I want to achieve them that trigger the discipline necessary to achieve the outcome. I want to do more collaborative business with more entrepreneurs. So that triggers the discipline to make sure that we're doing a consistent amount of reaching out to other people at the risk of people getting mad at us because we're reaching out too often. Every day we get some type of email, either I or my assistant get some type of email. I may be CC'd on it if she gets it, of someone who kind of gets annoyed with us because we keep reaching out and they haven't responded. And finally they respond and say, no, we're not interested. And I'm okay with take, I'm okay with the trade-off of someone getting annoyed with us because we reached out because we're going to keep reaching out because the trade-off of the trade-off is that some people are going to say yes. So I'm motivated to execute on that discipline. 
and I can give you a ton of examples of this. I'm motivated to make sure that this show comes out every single day because I told you I'm going to have a daily show. And that triggers the discipline of making sure that I keep coming up with material and I make sure I take time out consistently to record new materials and make sure it keeps coming out. Right? Motivation leads to discipline. So understand that motivation comes and goes, though, folks. See, this is the challenge of motivation. It comes and goes. You're not always motivated. And motivation is not always available when you go looking for it. See, sometimes you want to get yourself motivated, but you're just not motivated. Like, I want to, I know I'm supposed to go to the gym. Like, your alarm is going off. It's five in the morning. You usually wake up at six, but you're waking up at five because you talked to Dre. And Dre said, well, get up an hour earlier and go to the gym so you can get your workout in in the morning so it's done and taken care of. Now, here it is, 5 a.m. The alarm's going off. You're laying in bed and you're thinking to yourself, I know I'm supposed to get up and go to the gym, but I don't really feel like it. And you're not motivated to get out of bed. What do you do? See, this is the reason why motivation is only the starting point. It's not the finishing point. It's only the starting point. Motivation gets you started, but it must, it must pass the work off to discipline at some point. You cannot just stop and end with motivation. The problem with motivation it is inconsistent. Motivation is unreliable. You cannot build your career on motivation, unless, except, exception being a motivational speaker. But that's not what I mean. Here. It's not the context. You can't build your career on getting yourself motivated every single day. Nobody is motivated every day. Name somebody. Name any professional you know. Name your favorite professional in any space, entertainer, athlete, entrepreneur, government person, whoever. Nobody is motivated every day. Nobody. Everybody has days where they do not feel like doing whatever it is that they do. Guaranteed. You can't name one person who always feels like it. There is no, there is no one. Those of you listening to this right now who are professionals at what you do, do you feel like going to work every day? Okay, there you go. Nobody's motivated to go to work every day. But those of you who just answer it that you don't feel like going to work every day, do you go to work every day? Okay, there you go. That's discipline. Discipline is when you go to work, even if you don't feel like it. Motivations are not a substitute for discipline. I want to make sure that is extremely clear. Motivation is never a substitute for discipline. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is when motivation matters. Number three. It is hard to simply install discipline into another person unless you have some level of authority and ability to administer repercussions and punishments to that person. Because uh, some of you will hear this or maybe you'll hear it and be inspired to think, you know what, maybe somebody who I know who needs to be disciplined could use this message that Dre is sharing. And I agree with you. They probably could use this message. However, they will not implement this message unless they want to. They will not implement this message unless they want to. You cannot make someone want to be motivated or disciplined. You can't make somebody do this. They have to choose it. As I told you, motivation is never a substitute for discipline. So understand that motivation comes and goes. So you can motivate somebody one day. If you're a, I get brought in, for example, with the topics that I talk about, I give a keynote speech that is called work on your game. And most uh, booking agents and uh, decision makers at places that hire events usually categorize me as a quote unquote motivational speaker. I, I will fall into the motivational category, right? So they will bring me in to kind of get to go and give the speech. But within, let's say five days of me giving my speech, most of what I say on the stage is forgotten by the people who are in the audience. They were motivated while I was talking and maybe for the next day or three, but eventually most of what I said, they forget. So they don't get a long-term discipline just from hearing the speech one time, the same way that if you were to go take things that you heard here today, and you're motivated and fired up about it, and you go give it to somebody who is not interested, they may be motivated and fired up for a day or two based on what you said and did, but they're not going to stay that way just because of what you did. They got to choose to do it. Motivation cannot substitute for discipline. So when you're looking to move other people to action, motivation is useful, but you cannot install discipline in another person. You can give motivation, but motivation is not something that is installed. Discipline is installed. Motivation is just given. Because motivation itself is not a system. Discipline is a system. Motivation is not. It's just an action. And there's a difference between an action and a system. A system is something that there's a full process and it works basically on its own once it is properly installed. An action is just something that you do. Right? There's a difference. The only way you can make someone be disciplined is when you're, as we talked about in yesterday's masterclass, boss versus leader. If you're a boss, you can make somebody be disciplined by simply telling them what they have to do and making sure that they do it every single time. Eventually, they'll just do it without you having to breathe down their neck, hopefully, if they have any level of uh, character and integrity. Now they have kind of picked up on the discipline on their own. The problem is they may not keep it if they do not uh, fear repercussions. 
this is one of the reasons why it has been said, I don't have personal experience with this, but it has been said that when people are in the military, they're usually at their highest level in their life as a person because they're being held to such high standards and they know that they're being watched. They, they must live up to those standards with that, or they will face repercussions. And even though they know exactly what the standards are and they know what the repercussions are, that when you let them out of that environment, when there is no more repercussion hanging over their necks, that they cannot maintain that level because there's nothing forcing them to do it. So even though they were highly disciplined for the 10 years they were in the army, as soon as they get dropped out, they don't maintain that discipline because nothing's making them do it. And this is just the paradox of being human. What I'm sharing here, this is the paradox of humanity is that we usually do stuff and we're forced to do it. And when we're no longer being forced, we tend to slack off. This is how it works. And the highest level performers don't allow that slack. That's the key right there. And how do the highest level performers not allow this slack? It's not because they have some special chip installed in their brain. It's that they go and put the pieces in place that allow them to not slack. The highest level performers have coaches. The highest level performers have trainers. The highest level performers are in masterminds. The highest level performers don't try to do everything on their own. This is the reason why they're high level performers. Not because they just uh, magically just uh, they have just they're able to just sit in a dark room and just figure all this stuff out on their own. All right, that's not what we do. And it's not what you should be doing either. If you've been trying to do that, well, you're running the wrong race. So let me save you some energy. So short of having the leverage of forcing someone to do something, you can find ways to motivate people to move them to action, at least get them started. Again, you can get them started. You can get them started on the right foot. If you're a coach, for example, you can motivate your players to do whatever they're doing when they're playing for you. But as soon as they stop playing for you, you don't control what they do. You don't control if they maintain that discipline. They got to do that. So whether or not they follow through after you're not around, and that ain't your job. That ain't your responsibility, and it ain't on you if they don't. This is why you have motivational speakers. You got motivational YouTube channels, motivational books, motivational text messages, motivational social media. All right? And I engage in all of these things. They provide a quick jolt of energy that moves someone maybe to an immediate action based on short-term energy. However, unless discipline is somehow added to the equation, this motivation is only short term and the actions and the results will only be short term. This is the reason why many people can get motivated, but very few people are disciplined. I can motivate anybody. All right? Anybody listening to this, I can come up with a whole episode to motivate the hell out of you. But I cannot make you disciplined. I can motivate you, but I cannot make you disciplined. Those are two different things. Now, I can show you how to be disciplined, but I can't make you disciplined. I can make you get motivated. All right? I can just give you a good speech and it will get you motivated. But I can't make you be disciplined because discipline is more of a long term game and it's much more. What's the word? Cerebral than motivation. Motivation is more emotional, whereas discipline is more cerebral. Discipline is more of a thought process, whereas motivation is much more of an emotional process. Very easy to trigger somebody's emotions with the right words, right actions, right energies at the right time. You can trigger anybody's emotions with the right stuff. You cannot trigger somebody's intellect. All right? Some people don't have enough of it to go around. All right. So you discipline is a much harder thing to install. Not impossible, but harder than motivation comparatively. And this is the reason why so few people are disciplined, even though anybody can get motivated. Let's recap today's class, which is when motivation matters. Again, motivation is a useful thing. It's not as strong as discipline, but it is useful today. I'm telling you how and when. Number one, motivation is a reason to move yourself to action more readily than information. People do not move to action based on logic. They move to action based on energy and emotion. And emotion is a very strong energy, whatever emotion it is. And when you can utilize energy, energy is 85% of the job in life, you can move a person to action, including yourself. But do not be confused in believing motivation doesn't matter, even though discipline is more important. Motivation can move someone to a quick jolt of energy. If there's a car about to hit you and you're in the middle of the street, you can be motivated through energy to get the hell out of the street. Or even if you were dead tired two seconds ago, because the motivation will move you to action. So don't think the motivation doesn't matter, but it ain't discipline. Number two, motivation is a start starting point that triggers discipline. See, discipline is a long-term, more cerebral activity, whereas motivation is a short-term emotional activity. When you get started with motivation, you must hand the motivation off to, you must hand the job off from motivation to discipline, because if you only have motivation, eventually your motivation will wane, it will drop, and there goes your activity, whatever behavior you are looking to install, it will not last if you do not Pick it if you do not pick up where motivation left off with discipline. Number three, when looking to move other people to action, motivation is very useless, useful rather. But it's hard to simply install discipline in another person, even though you can give motivation. And notice that verbiage. You can give 
motivation to another person very easily. Any of us can be motivated by the right message, the right time coming from the right person, said the right way. Any of us can be motivated. You cannot just randomly discipline, give discipline to another person. You can discipline a person as a verb, but you cannot give discipline, the noun, to another person. They have to choose to do it. They have to be involved in the process. You can't make that happen to somebody. You can make motivation happen. You cannot make discipline happen. It has to be a personal choice. Is the reason why many people are not disciplined, even though anybody and everybody can at different times get motivated. All that said, folks, you want to get my daily motivation and Monday motivation messages. I can give that to you. Make sure you text me. See you in my text community. Numbers down below in the description. Also, work on your game university. You would like to install the bulletproof mindset. You would like to make sure you have clear strategies and processes for what you're doing in your business and your professional life. You want to have a system so you can do the same things the same way every time and know how to install systems and build systems for your business and your career moving forward and your life also off outside of business. And you want to make sure you're being held accountable for full implementation for high level performance and producing results. Go to work on your game university .com. Have me as your direct coach. That link is down below in the description. Work on your game. Dre all day.